Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nancy and I'm an entomologist and every week, at least once a week, I am producing videos about bugs. So if you like bugs or are curious about bugs, feel free to hit that subscribe button right down there below. So today I thought I would start a new video series asking Google questions about entomology and then answering the most commonly asked questions. So today I was just going to get the basics out of the way and just ask Google what an entomologist is and what entomologists do. So the first question on Google is, what does an entomologist study? And an entomologist studies insects. Insects are organisms, they're animals, they have three body segments, a hard exoskeleton, six legs, two antennae, and two compound eyes. So your question is like, oh, well what about spiders or scorpions or daddy long legs? People who study those generally categorize themselves under the group of entomology, but will probably call themselves something a little bit more specialized. So you might find someone who studies spiders who calls themselves an arachnologist. Why do entomologists study insects? I think there's three main reasons for that. Insects are our major competitors for our food, our space, and our health. And so a lot of people get into studying insects because they are concerned about these larger problems. So that's why you find people who are interested in pest control in urban environments, or you find people who are interested in pest control in agricultural environments where you can produce food yield and not waste as much food. And then of course there's a the whole health issue as a lot of our health problems come from insects that vector diseases like mosquitoes. So if we can learn to control the vector, we can learn to control the disease and that ultimately can save lives. As for me, I just think bugs are beautiful. They've always been underrepresented to me. Like I got into bugs because I went to Australia and I came back with one picture of a kangaroo and about 300 pictures of bugs and I was like, how can no one tell me anything about these insects? Like, why can't anyone tell me what they are? Why can't anyone tell me what they eat? Why can't anyone tell me about their biology? And to me, just that under-representation of insects in our classrooms and in our everyday life, just knowing about them, got me really inspired and got me really thinking about it. Like, I would ask questions about insects and people would respond like, oh, it's not that I don't know, it's that science doesn't know. Like, we as a collection of people don't know. And that was just crazy to me. What does entomology mean? Uh, basically entomology, it comes from the Greek word entomo, which means segmented. So we study segmented things. What do entomologists do? So we know that they study insects, but what does that entail if you are an entomologist? Fortunately, if you're interested in bugs, bugs are used as lots of model organisms in pest control, for diseases, for genetics. So basically an entomologist so these insects, but you could be a geneticist doing studying genes, you can be working in agriculture, you can be working in pest control, you can be working in the military as a military entomologist, you can be doing ecology, environmental science with like environmental health. So and saying an entomologist does a specific thing is a little disingenuous because entomologists can literally be in any field and just happen to use an insect as their model organism. Next question is, what do entomologists make? And I'm assuming this is in terms of a salary and it really depends. Again, you can have freelance entomologists who are really into science communication and they could be making twenty dollars to $30,000 a year. You can have grad students who are making like $15,000 a year. You can have pest control companies that are making millions of dollars a year. You can have professors and researchers who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So again, it really depends on what you get into and what you like doing in entomology, but ultimately like it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a price tag on your job. Like you should do your job because you love it. The next question is what do entomologists do on a daily basis? So what an entomologist does day to day is really dependent on what they're studying and how they're applying entomology in their career. Next question is, what do entomologists wear? I'm wearing a t-shirt, happens to have bugs on it. I know lots of entomologists like showing their bug pride and wear a lot of stuff with bugs on them. But again, it completely depends on your job and what you're doing. Like, 
If you are in a lab and you're working with dangerous chemicals, you're probably going to be wearing a lab coat. But if you're out in the field, then you're probably going to be wearing sealed clothes. Sometimes if you're in areas where there's a lot of ticks, you're going to be wearing white. And sometimes if you feel like dressing up and going out for the night, you're wearing a super cute dress. Next question is, why do entomologists use dichotomous keys? And I have an example of a dichotomous key right there. And a dichotomous key is used to identify organisms. We use those because in entomology, things like color aren't quite as important as, say, if you're trying to identify birds. Lots of insects can come in a bazillion types of colors. Some insects mimic other insects, and so their coloration is very similar, even though they're completely different groups. Like, you can have beetles that mimic wasps. You can have flies that mimic wasps. It's crazy. So those kinds of identification features that are just based on color or shape aren't very good. So entomologists need to use dichotomous keys because we're looking at things like how many antennal segments does it have? Like how many toes does the creature have? What do the wing venation looks like? How many wings are there? Like what are the shape of the eyes? And all of these things are really important to entomologists that you know the normal person may not think to look at in an insect. What do entomologists use to capture insects? Um, the most common thing is just a regular butterfly net. I've actually done a few videos on collecting, so just a normal net that you might expect, like if you think of Pokemon, like the bug catchers. So nets. <laughs> There's a special kind of net called a D-net, which I also did a video about, which is used for aquatic collecting. You can just use your hands. Uh, a crowbar to pull off bark is a common tool that we use in entomology. There are things called um, pit traps, which is where you basically just take a cup and you dig a little hole and you put some rotting fruit or fish in it and you wait for beetles to fall in. There are lazy funnel traps, which are a big funnel, as the name might suggest, with a little pot of alcohol at the bottom. And you put leaf litter in top of the hot lamp and all the insects fall down into the alcohol. There is pan trapping, which is where you put out colored bowls and that attracts pollinators and you put water and, and soap in it and the soapy water breaks surface tension so the insects fall in and drown. You can also use other chemicals, um, but soapy water is definitely the cheapest. And then you can have just um, sticky traps, which are exactly as they sound. It's just like a flat piece of paper that you put on the ground or hang and they're covered in some sort of glue and the insects will crawl over and step on that. There are a regular funnel traps or pheromone traps, which are like, look like a funnel, you hang them and they either release some sort of pheromone or something else that is attractive to the insect. Sometimes you can just use a light and they hit the funnel and fall into the alcohol. Or you can just use a light trap, either using a UV light trap, a mercury vapor light bulb, or just a really bright light. If you have a porch light and you put up a sheet, that is considered a light trap. Some of these, methods kill the insect, which you might actually need to do to get accurate surveys of what is in the area, and some of them just attract the insect and then you can look at it and release it later. What does an entomologist do at a crime scene? This is actually an entire college level course. I taught it. It was called Forensic Entomology. But generally, as soon as the entomologist gets to the crime scene, which in most cases the entomologist isn't even the one that goes to the crime scene. Usually it's police departments who get there, which is why it's really important that police departments are trained in how to collect entomological evidence so it's not ruined by the time it gets to the entomologist. But if an entomologist is there at the crime scene, the entomologist will go with their collecting equipment and they will look at the body, they'll mark any any notes about open wounds or if the body has been there for a long time, if there's aggregates of maggots, they will collect maggots and other insects out of the dead body. They will move or after the body is moved, they will collect insects from under the body and they will collect soil samples from around the area and they will tag all of those, they'll mark them really well, and then when they get back to the lab, they'll start analyzing all of that evidence. So the next question is, how do entomologists actually help solve crimes? And again, this is a whole course that I could talk to you about, but pretty generally, what the entomologist does is studies the evidence of the insects that are present. So they are identifying different species, and they are saying whether or not those species are yes, relevant to the case, or no, not relevant to the case. The insects, 
that our decomposing organic matter like bodies have a very specific rate at which they grow, which is related to both the time that they have been out in the field and the temperature that they're exposed to. So knowing those two details, like how long it takes generally for an insect to grow up to this stage at this temperature, you can estimate how long a body has been dumped and left out to the elements. And that's basically what the forensic entomologist does. The forensic entomologist gives a PMI or a post-mortem interval, which is not when the person died, but how long the body has been exposed to these elements. And so the forensic entomologist can give a rough estimate of time of death, which can be anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months to a couple years. So those were Google's most frequently Googled questions about entomology and entomologists. So I hope that this shed a little bit of light onto the topic. If you guys have any questions, feel free to go down into the comments and leave any questions and give me suggestions for what group of insects you are most interested in doing this for next time.